Lewis and Clark and the Expedition West. The guiding questions we will be answering in today's lesson are, one, what was the Louisiana Purchase? Two, who explored the new lands west of the Mississippi River? Three, how did the exploration journey go? Four, what did Lewis and Clark bring back to President Jefferson from their journey? Thomas Jefferson is, is the third president of the United States in 1803. And he is desiring to purchase the land west of the Mississippi River, which at this time belonged to France because they had explored it first and had claimed it. Uh, it's called the Louisiana Purchase because Louisiana is the area where the French had set up several forts and created towns and um, had it set up there. Now Jefferson uh, buys the land from France in 1803 from Napoleon Bonaparte so that the United States could grow larger and stronger. After this purchase, the U.S. becomes twice as large as it had been before. So he buys it from France and it grows significantly. The Louisiana Purchase was 828,000 square miles of land, and the land deal was for $15 million. Now, what was known as the Louisiana Purchase was the Louisiana Territory, which stretched from the Mississippi River on the east side to the Rocky Mountains in the west and from the Gulf of Mexico in the south to the Canadian border in the north. Part of all of 15 states were eventually created from this land deal, which is considered one of the most important achievements of Thomas Jefferson's presidency. So 1803 was a good year. And we can see that picture of a liaison negotiating a deal in the French courts regarding this land. So who was to explore this new land? Well, Jefferson wanted to hire explorers to go all the way to the Pacific Ocean and make maps, learn about the wild animals, birds, and trees in these new lands. He also he wanted to make contact with the Native American tribes that were out west. So Meriwether Lewis was a boyhood friend of Thomas Jefferson. Lewis had joined the army and had learned how to survive in the wilderness and get along with the Native Americans. And Jefferson knew he would be a great candidate for this exploration. So he went ahead and asked Lewis to head up the mission. And Lewis accepted but he was in need of a partner, so he chose a man named William Clark. Now, Clark had been in the army with Lewis, and he was eager to join him in the exploration of the Louisiana Purchase for Jefferson as well. And the two of them, Lewis and Clark, are the ones who head up this journey west for Jefferson. The Exploration Plan Lewis and Clark planned to use the rivers in the western wilderness as trails since no one had ever mapped out this area before. They hoped to travel as far as they could up the Missouri River. They got a group of about 40 men together, loaded the boats with supplies like food, clothes, medicine, guns, and presents for the Indians. Clark brought along his big dog, Seaman, Another name, man named Peter Cruzat brought along his fiddle, and in May of 1804, the men set out on their way to explore the new country. It was hard work to row the heavy boats upstream up the river. Sometimes the river was too shallow or had rapids, so the men had to carry the boats along the shoreline. Lewis and Clark had made careful notes about the trees and the bushes and the birds that they saw along the way and made maps of how the river turned and jutted this way and that. When the explorers met a tribe of Native Americans, they stopped for a talk with the chiefs, and they would they told the chiefs that the country belonged to the United States and that the president wanted all the Indians to be his friends. They also gave the chiefs medals with President Jefferson's picture on them, and these are still around today as primary sources that you can see. Winter with the Mandans. So Lewis and Clark had started out in May of 1804, but by October, the explorers had traveled 1,600 miles. They were in the country that is now 
North Dakota. Um, so they were in, when I say the country, I mean the land area or the territory that is now North Dakota. The Indians there were friendly and their town was called Mandan, Mandan Town. Lewis and Clark decided to stay there and built a camp for the winter months and then continued on their, with the plan to continue on their journey once the weather warmed up again in the spring. So while they were staying near the Mandan tribe, Lewis and Clark met a Shoshone woman named Sacagawea. Her name means bird woman. They discovered that she had been, a, when she was a little girl, Sacagawea had lived with another tribe, her own tribe in the Rocky Mountains. And this tribe was called the Shoshones. Another tribe of Indians had come to fight the Shoshones when Sacagawea was young, and during the battle, the enemy tribe had carried Sacagawea far from her home. At first, she had been a slave, but now she was the wife of a French trader and lived with the Mandans. Lewis and Clark knew that they needed someone to, who was familiar with the region, particularly the Rocky Mountains. And when they started up their journey again, they needed someone to come along with them. They thought Sacagawea would be the perfect fit, and so they asked her to be a translator as well as a guide. So she and her husband and baby son decided to join the Lewis and Clark expedition when they started up again in the spring. Rocky Mountains, the Shoshone tribe. So when spring arrived, the group set out again. They experienced rapids and waterfalls as well as an encounter with a grizzly bear. And when they reached the Rocky Mountains, they had to leave the canoes. They needed horses to cross the mountains and they hoped Sacagawea's Shoshone Indians would sell them horses so that they could cross the mountains. They knew the Shoshone were somewhere close because they saw the tracks of their horses and their signal fires at night, but the Indians kept out of sight. At last, a few of them were found, and the chief came to talk with Lewis and Clark. They called Sacagawea to tell the chief what they wanted to say to him. And at first, Sacagawea sat very still, looking at the chief, but suddenly she jumped up and threw her arms around his neck. The Shoshone chief was Sacagawea's brother, and when she had been captured, he had only been a boy. Now he was the chief of, chief of her old tribe. She had found him again, and Lewis and, and Clark were overjoyed because they knew that they could secure horses and a Shoshone guide to lead them across the Great Rockies. This was a huge victory for them in the expedition. And then they continued on their journey. On to the Pacific Ocean. Well, the Rocky Mountains are steep and rough and they are very high. The men had to wind around the mountains, but with the aid of their horses from the Shoshones, they were able to make it. They kept on until they had crossed the Great Rockies, a feat they could not have done without Sacagawea and several other Indian guides who knew the way. Once they reached the Columbia River, they made new canoes and used the river as a waterway to the Pacific Ocean. On November 7th, 1805, Lewis and Clark reached the end of their journey. The great continent of North America lay behind them. The shining waters of the Pacific Ocean rolled in front of them. They had reached their goal. They were the first European Americans from the East to ever cross the country to the far Pacific Ocean. In March, the explorers started home. When they reached St. Louis, where they had uh, first started out, they had gone had been gone for about two years. So most people had thought they would never come back. That's no surprise. No one had ever done that before. The people of St. Louis turned out to welcome them. News of their safe return was sent at once to President Jefferson. People all over the United States were super overjoyed um, and glad when they heard the news. Now, Lewis hurried on to Washington to see the president. He took all the maps and papers with him. He also brought back many interesting artifacts, artifacts, and that's what you see there in the slide from the lands that they had explored and the Native American cultures that they had experienced. You can see many of these finds that Lewis brought to Jefferson at Monticello if you go there on a visit today. So let's kind of walk through some of what you see in the slide. This bear claw necklace, um, to wear a bear claw necklace was a mark of distinction for a warrior or a chief, and the right to wear it had to be earned. 
These powerful symbols were a part of the culture of the Great Lakes, Plains, and Plateau tribes. Lewis's woodpecker is kind of interesting there. It's uh, displayed to the left, and it may be the only specimen collected during the Lewis and Clark expedition to survive intact. But he brought back several specimens with him to show Jefferson the various types of birds and um, artifacts that he could carry with him so he could have um, something tangible to, sh to show. So the coyote headdress um, of the Plains Indians, you may remember this when we studied Native Americans, but the coyote was a mythic trickster of the Plains Indians and was the protector of the scouts who spied on the enemy for a war party. The elk antlers are also from the expedition, and the most interesting artifact is in the center, the upper jawbone of a mastodon. These fossils were from the famous uh, Big Bone Lick, Kentucky, where Jefferson had commissioned William Clark and Lewis to explore this site at his own expense, and they brought him back parts of a dinosaur or a mastodon, which um, it's it's known that Jefferson really took an interest to. Lewis and Clark also brought back a buffalo hide decorated with a painted war scene on it from the Plains Indians, and Jefferson hung it in the entrance to his home at Monticello. If you go to Monticello today, the entrance hall is like a museum, and Jefferson planned it this way to show off all the impressive artifacts that had come back from the Lewis and Clark expedition. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more flipped classroom lessons on American history.